Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, recently we have been hearing about Jerusalem a lot because of President Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as part of Israel. It is important on moments and occasions like these to remind ourselves what is the Islamic perspective on issues such as these. For the Muslims, it is not about politics, it is not about the land, the resources, the oil, the gold, the silver. It is not about the strategic position of Palestine, Jerusalem. It is much, much higher than this. For the Muslims, it's about two things. Number one, it is about Iman. It is part of our faith to love Masjid al-Aqsa. It is part of our Iman to recognize the virtues of this great mosque and the surrounding areas. And number two, it is about justice for the oppressed Palestinian people who have been oppressed for decades now. It's all about faith and justice. It's not about the dunya. It's not about politics. It's not about land, resources. No, none of these. It is important to rekindle in our hearts the recognition and love for Masjid al-Aqsa. And it is important that we convey this faith and love to our following generation, the next generation, our youth. They need to know why is it important for Muslims? Why is this issue so important and dear for Muslims? My dear brothers and sisters, Masjid al-Aqsa is no ordinary masjid. Is no piece of pro property that is like any other piece of property. For Muslims, it has a value. Our hearts are attached, our souls are attached to the holy places, to the holy mosques. First and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He called this masjid and the surrounding areas a blessed masjid. There is a blessing in this area. There is barakah in Jerusalem. There is barakah in the surrounding areas of Masjid al-Aqsa. There is barakah in Bilad al-Sham, the greater Syria areas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the Quran, Bada la'udhu billahi min shaytan al-rajim. Subhanalladhi Asra bi abdihi layla min al masjid al harami ila al masjid al aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah, the glorified one, He is the one who transferred in the night journey His slave, His servant Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from one masjid to the other masjid, from one holy place to the other holy place. From Mecca to Jerusalem, from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, to the farthest mosque. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described this masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the holiness, the blessing of this masjid. Alladhi barakna hawlahu. The one which is blessed. It is not about land, resources, power. It's not about any of those. It's about the blessing. Why are we so passionate about this masjid? Because of the blessing of this masjid. We want to enjoy the blessings of this masjid. We want to maintain the blessings of this area. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this area, this land, and called it a holy land. When Musa alayhi salam, he tells his nation to enter this land. What does he say? He say he says, Ya Qawmi Dukulu al Ardul Muqaddasa. O nation, 
O my nation, O my people, enter the holy land. It is Ardul Muqaddasa. It is a land which has blessings. It is a land which is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a land which is beloved to the believers. Our hearts are attached to these lands. My dear brothers and sisters, it is not about politics. It is not about resources. It is not about the world, the dunya. It is much, much more noble than any of that. It is a masjid established by Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim, the father of the Anbiya, he establishes these two cities, one in Mecca. He builds the Kaaba, Masjid al-Haram. And the second in Jerusalem, Masjid al-Aqsa. Two holy cities, two holy masajid. Two great nations come out of these. The nation of believers. That's why these places are so important to us. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the land which was desired by Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet of Allah, desired to enter this land when he took the Bani Israel out of Egypt. So much so that when death came to Musa alayhi salam and he was not able to enter this holy land, he died as close as possible to it. It is said that Musa alayhi salam died a stone's throw away from the holy land. He wanted to be as close as possible to the Holy Land when death came upon him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the Bani Israel, the believers, to enter the Holy Land and establish this as part of their capital, as part of the capital of the believers. This became the center of da'wah, the center of tawheed, the center of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For hundreds of years, the believers ruled from this area. For hundreds of years, the da'wah, monotheism, was spread from this capital. Prophet after prophet after prophet was appointed as the imam of the masjid in Al-Aqsa, the holy land. Why is this important to us? Because this is the land of the Anbiya. The prophets have left behind their traces in these lands. Why are these lands important to the Muslims? Because these are the lands where Dawood alayhi salam, Suleiman alayhi salam, they established the great kingdom, the kingdom of peace and justice. These are the lands where Zakaria alayhi salam was the imam of the temple, the masjid, and he trains Maryam. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon her. Mary, the mother of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, she gets her training in Jerusalem. She witnesses great miracles in this land. It is in this land that Isa alayhi salam, Jesus peace be upon him, taught the gospel, the Injil. That is why this land is holy. That is why this land is important. That is why this land is beloved to the believers. My dear brothers and sisters, the Prophet sallallahu he mentioned one prayer in Masjid al-Aqsa, one salah in Masjid al-Aqsa, is equivalent to 250 prayers elsewhere. SubhanAllah, how blessed is this masjid? One prayer in this masjid, 250 prayers in another masjid, in another place. The Prophet Wasallam, he loved Masjid al-Aqsa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave him the great miracle. The great miracle, one of the greatest miracles that mankind has ever, ever been blessed with was the miracle of Al-Isra Al-Miraj, the night journey of the Prophet ﷺ. When he was sad and depressed, he had lost his wife Khadija anha. He had lost his greatest supporter in his uncle Abu Talib. People were mocking at him. The mission of Islam was going nowhere. And Allah blessed him with a gift, with this miraculous night journey to lift his spirits, to increase his iman. When he is transferred from one masjid to another on Burak, the special animal that Jibreel alayhi salam brought with him. And then from Jerusalem, he goes up in the heavens where he meets his Lord, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes him witness many of his great signs. And in the long narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, and then it was time for salah, it was time for prayer, and I led them in prayer. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led thousands and thousands and thousands of prophets where? In this area. That's why this area is so holy. That's why this area is so blessed. This area has witnessed the greatest salah, the greatest blessing, the greatest gathering of believers making salah ever. There has never been a gathering like this. Can you imagine 124,000 prophets gathered in one masjid? And who's their imam? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can any other gathering beat this gathering? The best of human beings gathered together from the beginning to the end, praying behind the best human being ever. The most beloved gathering, the gathering of the Anbiya, the gathering of the Prophets. SubhanAllah, what a blessed area this is. So it is not about the world, it is not about the resources, the strategic position of Jerusalem. No, no, no. For the believers, for the Muslims, it's about the blessings of this area. We love this because this is the area of the prophets. This is where Wahi descended. This is where Isa alayhi salam taught. This is where Islam grew and became strong. This is the capital of Tawheed in times of darkness. When the whole world was full of ignorance, of shirk and kufr, the light of Tawheed was coming out of where? It was coming out of Masjid al-Aqsa. It was coming out of Jerusalem. My dear brothers and sisters, why is this area so beloved to us? Why is this Masjid so beloved to us? Because this was our first Qibla. This was our first Qibla. For 17 months, the Muslims faced towards Jerusalem in their prayer five times a day. That shows how important this masjid is. Today our Qibla is Mecca. How much we love Mecca. How much we adore Mecca. Even when the picture of the Kaaba comes in front of our eyes. A photograph of the Kaaba, Masjid al-Haram comes in front of our eyes. How do we start feeling inside? We start longing for it. We start desiring the journey towards it. We want to be there. We want to make dua, we want to make salah, we want to be part of the gathering of the believers in Hajj and Umrah. It is our Qibla. Jerusalem is also part of our history. It is also one of the Qiblas that the early believers, the first believers, the generation of the Sahaba, they faced Jerusalem, they faced Masjid al-Aqsa for 17 months in prayer. That's why we love Jerusalem. That's why we love Masjid al-Aqsa. That's why we love the greater Syria area because of the great blessings in it. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the believers will enter Jerusalem. When the Prophet ﷺ said those words, Jerusalem was not part of the Muslim Empire. It was part of the Roman Empire. And he made this prophecy which was fulfilled in the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And Muslims entered Jerusalem and they established the peace and justice. For hundreds and hundreds of years this area enjoyed the justice of Islam, the peace of Islam, where the Jews, the Christians, other people of religions, they enjoyed their rights under Islam. It is so sad to see what is happening over there right now. The rights of our Palestinian brothers and sisters, their houses being taken away, their properties being confiscated, grabbed, stripped off from their land. Slowly, we are moving towards the end of times, definitely. Because in the end of times, this cycle will repeat itself. Because the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned that the Dajjal, when he comes, Masih al-Dajjal, the Antichrist, the biggest fitna, the greatest disaster that humanity has ever seen. 
When he comes, the Prophet peace be upon him said, in 40 days he will conquer the entire earth. Can you imagine somebody conquering the entire earth in 40 days? The entire earth belongs to this one, one person. The greatest disaster, the most cruel, oppressive. We think the dictatorships these days are oppressive. We don't even know what oppression means. When he comes, the world will know what oppression means. May Allah save us from his fitna. 40 days, the entire earth will be taken. Except the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the three holy cities. Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem. He cannot enter these three cities. These will be the cities for the believers in the end of times. The cycle will repeat itself. Belief will emanate from Jerusalem in the end of times. Isa salam will descend in these areas. Why do we love Bilal al-Sham? Why do we love Jerusalem? Because Isa salam, Jesus peace be upon him, will return in these lands in the end of times. And he will assume the leadership of believers in the end of times. And he is the one who will fight the forces of evil. The forces of the Dajjal. And Dajjal will actually be cured near Jerusalem. In the final battles, it will be Jerusalem. And then peace will be established once again for years to come until the end of times. And the Prophet said, it is these areas, the Bilal al-Sham areas, where the resurrection will take place, where the gathering and resurrection will take place. That's why these areas are so important. That's why the Muslims love these areas. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted a high status to these cities, to these mosques. And no matter who says what about these areas, these areas do not belong to any human being, any group that they can make claim to these. The earth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will give it to those He wills. Allahu Malikul Mulk. He gives to whomever He wants. It is in the end of times that these areas will be in the spotlight again. So our eyes are fixed on Jerusalem. Our eyes are fixed on Masjid al-Aqsa. Our eyes are fixed on Bilal al-Sham. In wait for Jesus. In wait for Iman and belief to be victorious over Kufr and Shirk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant peace to these areas. May Allah bring victory to the believers in these areas. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring justice for all in these areas. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect these areas from the evil of shaitan and those who are his allies. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us make salah one day in Masjid al-Aqsa in its freedom and justice so that we could enjoy the blessings of these areas again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the lands of the believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the iman of the believers. Amin. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد My dear brothers and sisters for Muslims it's all about love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's all about the love of the Anbiya, the love of the Masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in which the name of Allah is mentioned, Tawheed is strengthened, the Dawah of Islam is made, truth and justice is established. My dear brothers and sisters, Masjid al-Aqsa is one of the three mosques. The Prophet sallallahu said, we are allowed to make a religious journey to. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, no journey should be made except to the three mosques. No journey meaning a religious journey. With the niyyah of ibadah, I'm going to make this travel to visit a place for the sake of Allah. 
We are not allowed to make such a journey for any other mosque in the world except three. The Masjid in Mecca, Masjid al-Haram. The Masjid of the Prophet wasallam in Medina, Masjid al-Nabui. And the third one, Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem. So for the believers, it's ibadah. It's ibadah to visit this masjid, to pray in this masjid, to travel to this masjid, to enjoy the blessings, the holiness of this masjid. And the Prophet wasallam, he also said, blessed is greater Syria. All these lands surrounding Jerusalem, including Jerusalem. Blessed is this entire area. The Sahaba, they asked, the, the companions asked, why? Why are these areas so blessed, O Messenger of Allah? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, because the angels of the merciful one, the angels of the most merciful one, they spread their wings over these lands. That's why these areas are so blessed. These are the lands of the angels. These are where angels are spreading their wings daily making dua for the believers, sending blessings on the believers. These are the lands where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful one, the best of his creation, the angels, the most innocent of his creation, the angels, they spread their wings. This area is protected for those who believe with the blessings of Allah. If this area is sealed, with the prayers of the angels. Why wouldn't this area then be a blessed area? And my dear brothers and sisters, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Verily, Al-Iman or faith, in the times of fitan, in the times of turmoil, in the times of difficulties, is in a sham. If you want to see Iman, if you want to feel faith, in the most difficult times, where will you find it on earth? In these regions. Jerusalem and its surrounding areas. When the entire world is leaving Iman, when the entire world is weak in their Iman, because of calamities, because of fitna, the people in these areas will be the strongest in Iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us Iman like this Iman. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alim. My dear brothers and sisters, why do we love Jerusalem? Why do we care so much about Jerusalem? These areas, Masjid Al-Aqsa, why are we so passionate about these when we talk about them? The best of Allah's creation are buried over there. The prophets are buried in these areas. Where do you think Ibrahim is buried? Where do you think Musa is buried? Where do you think Isa alayhi salam will be buried? Where do you think the Sahaba are buried? The companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Many of them, they are buried in these areas. Where do you think the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those beloved to Allah are buried? Many of them are buried in these areas. Some of the greatest Islamic scholars are buried in these areas. Why wouldn't this then be a holy place? when the best of Allah's creation died and were buried in this land. So definitely, surely, it makes sense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make it the best of the lands, the most blessed of the lands. My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to end with the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In these difficult times, these tests that we are facing, the Prophet peace be upon him, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on this ummah. This ummah is covered in the mercy of Allah. They will not be punished in the afterlife. This ummah, its punishment is not in the afterlife. Its grief, its sorrow, its turmoil, its tests, everything is in this life. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, their punishment is in this world. And that is the struggle in the path of Allah. The earthquakes and other disasters and fitna. So while we look at this life and we see what is going on with the Muslim world, why are we in this state of weakness? Why are we being humiliated in these ways? 
Why are our brothers and sisters being killed, their houses are being taken over, their properties are being demolished? When we look at that, yes, we are sorry, we feel sad. But from another perspective, we should remember this hadith. Whenever we find the ummah in trouble, we should remember this hadith. Even in difficulties, there is victory for Islam. There is victory for the Muslims. Because our pain and our suffering is not in the next life. Our pain and suffering and tests are in this life. So let us be strong with these tests. Let us not lose hope for the Ummah. Let us make dua for our brothers and sisters. Let us continue the struggle. Let us be the voices of peace and justice and truth in America. Who is going to be the representatives of the poor, oppressed Palestinian people in America? Who's going to raise their voice for them? Who's going to represent them? If, if not us, then who else? We have to speak for them. We have to speak for all who are oppressed. We have to be on the side of truth and justice, no matter where that truth and justice lies. We have to be the ambassadors of the Muslim Ummah in this country. So, do not forget your role you have a role to play and I have a role to play. And one of the important roles we all have to play is to keep the light, the flame that we have in our hearts, the love for Jerusalem, the love for Masjid al-Aqsa, keep it alive, keep it burning. Let us transfer this to our next generation. Let us transfer this to our children. Our youth need to know why are these lands important to us. Let us also not forget our dua. Let us not underestimate the power of dua. Because the dua of a believer for another believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts this dua. Ya Allah, we ask you to bring peace to the holy lands. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to give freedom to the people in these lands. Ya Allah, bring justice to the people in these lands. Ya Allah, give ownership of these lands to those who will rule with peace, who will rule with justice, who will rule with truth, who will rule with Iman. Ya Allah, protect the believers and protect their properties. Ya Allah, protect the believers and protect their lands. Ya Allah, protect the believers and protect their families. Ya Allah, make your angels go to work from morning to evening in these lands spreading their, their wings, spreading their peace and compassion. Ya Allah, make your angels make dua for them day and night. Ya Allah, accept the dua of, our, of the believers for the other believers. Ya Allah, have mercy on these people. Ya Allah, have mercy on these people. Ya Allah, have mercy on these people. Ya Allah, give us the opportunity to worship in Masjid Al-Aqsa. Ya Allah, give us the opportunity to enjoy the blessings, the holiness of these holy lands. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us amongst the true believers who in the end of times are on the right side, are on the side of truth and justice, are on the side of Isa alayhi salam, are on the side of, of you, are on the side of the Anbiya. Ya Allah, have mercy on, on us, keep us on the straight path. Ya Allah, have mercy on the believers, keep them on the straight path. Ya Allah, protect the Ummah. Ameen. Finally, couple of requests for dua. One of them, a sister is having surgery soon. She has requested dua. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant her shifa, to give her strength, to give her success in her surgery. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her sabr and patience. Amin. Also, our uh, beloved brother, brother Adam Al-Ansari and sister Jessica, they were blessed with a baby girl. They have named her Sophia. Uh, Congratulations to them. If you see them, please congratulate them. And we make dua for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the family. May Allah make Sophia from the Salihat. May Allah make her the coolness of their eyes. May Allah make her sadaqa jariya for them and the family members. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. Amen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab al wa qina adab al-qabri wa qina adab al-hashri wa qina adab al-mizan. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا آمنا بما أنزلت واتبعنا الرسول فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين 
ربنا أتمم لنا نورنا وغفر لنا إنك على كل شيء قدير ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا للقوم الكافرين Please stand for salah.